Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I hope you are having a fantastic day, evening, morning, wherever you're tuning in for, or, uh, from. And if this is your first time joining, welcome. My name is Ed Troxel and I am the guy that's going to help you turn your ideas into income and help you guide Sorry, and help guide you through your tech challenges. It's been a long day and I'm like super pumped about this episode today. So if this is your first time joining, welcome. Be sure to pop into the comments. Even if you're watching the replay, you're going to see that we have a lot of people jumping into the comments already and that we are around, we are all about the conversation, I should say. Vicky, long time no see. Welcome. Uh, so this is exciting. If you are on LinkedIn or you're thinking about LinkedIn or you have friends that have been talking to you about LinkedIn, tag them, bring them over, drop your questions. We're going to be talking about that here shortly. We're going to bring on a guest. Yes, we have a special guest. But let me just do a quick little rundown for those who are new. Uh, so we go live Monday through Friday here on the page. It's a business talk show. We talk about business, tech, and the user experience. We uh, typically will be mostly just me. I say we because I mean you and me. Uh, but typically it's just me on the show. However, I invite you to become a guest, just like you'll see today. We'll have a guest on the show. Hey, Aaron, haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. I hope all is well. And Paula, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Uh, so this is a business talk show. I invite you to become a guest. You can do that later, not now. You can just head to checkwithed.com. I put that in the comments so you don't have to leave right now. You can take a look at that later. A couple things I want you to do when you go to checkwithed.com. One it's Thursday, so that means that tomorrow, Friday, the newsletter goes out. It's a free newsletter where I include all of the previous episodes throughout the week, and then I give you kind of an update of what I've been working on, tips, tricks, discounts, things like that inside that email. So if you're not on my email list, definitely do that. When you go to checkwithed.com, just click on join newsletter and you're signed up. Uh, well, and you will sign up. See, I'm messing up the words a little bit today, but that's all good. Then after that, I want you to check out the Hey Ed community. It's just one of those things that you need to at least give yourself the opportunity to check it out. Uh, you may or may not sign up for it. That's fine. But at least I've done my job by providing you that info and encouraging you to go take a look at it because it is something that's going to help you with your business and with your tech stress. Yes, tech stress is a real thing. It's a chronic illness that all of us business owners and entrepreneurs are suffering from from day to day. So we'll get more into that in another episode, but that is a real thing. So take a look at Hey Ed. It's going to help you uh, grow personally and professionally and get your questions answered so you don't have to endlessly search Google or YouTube. You just get what you need when you need it. So take a look at that. It's right there. Welcome to everyone jumping in. I love it. Say hello. Tell us where you're tuning in from because we have our UK viewers and our US viewers and I'm sure everyone else in between. So let us know. Um, so that's all there for you at checkwithed.com. And if you wanted to become a guest, uh, you can click on Ed Talk TV and that will allow you to fill out a guest request form. And that's free to do. It doesn't cost you anything and it allows you to show up deliver and engage here on the show and be seen by others. So it's a really cool thing. And like I said, it's free, free advertising. How many of you guys think about advertising for your business? Um, and maybe you do already advertise your business. Let me know in the comments, actually. It's a great question for you to answer, even if you're watching the replay. How many of you guys think about advertising and how many of you guys are actually pay paying for ads? I will tell you right now uh, that I don't have that going on for my business at all in terms of paid ads. I think about advertising all the time because that, I mean, that's what I studied in college and that's always what my brain is thinking about marketing, advertising, and sales. Uh, but in terms of paid ads, thankfully, I have not had to go that route yet. I mean, I'm sure if I went that route, I could probably increase my business because of the awareness factor. But everything that I've done so far is all organic and it's awesome to be able to say that, number one. Uh, number two, though, it, it's a lot of work, uh, but I love it. And what's cool now is on Facebook, do you guys know this? Let me pull up my page real quick while you guys are popping in the comments. Let me pull up my Facebook page because I want to show you something that Facebook has now added for pages that maybe you don't know about yet, but it's a way for you to tell what a, which pages are advertising and what they're advertising. Hey, Paula, welcome. 
Hey, Tony, uh, Vicky says, I don't do paid ads. I did a couple of paid boosts, but they don't really work for me. Yeah, I've heard that before, Vicky, a lot of the times. Aaron says, pay for retention, not attention. Oh, I like that. <clears throat> I'll put that on the screen there. Tony says, I think about advertising and I'm not paying for ads. Nice. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you guys are right there with me. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's flip the screen here. Boom. Okay, so this is my page, obviously, because you guys are on it, uh, watching me live. Some of you might be watching the replay on my blog, and that's fine, because I do repurpose our videos here. But on Facebook pages now, you're going to see this tab that says Info and Ads. They've added that now to, I think, every page. And that's where you'll be able to see active ads. So see, it says Facebook is showing you ads ads this page is currently running to provide more transparency into advertising. Look at that. There are no paid ads for this page. Told you. I told you. Told you. So this is a, a new feature that you can kind of look at when you're uh, with other pages and checking it out and seeing there. Hey, Andy, welcome. Uh, thinking about uh, boosting a post to get signups for a challenge. My audience is still very small but growing. Awesome. Small and mighty. It's all good, you guys. Does That's the thing. Like, I won't get too far into it today because I think I'm saving it for tomorrow's topic because I want to make sure we have plenty of time for our guests today because I'm really stoked about LinkedIn. Um, but I think we're going to talk about it tomorrow more about the whole um, growing our audience thing and really like the different ways we can grow it. I think I have that on the books for tomorrow. So we'll take a look at that. And Vicky says, oh, that's new. You're in the bubble. Yes. Yeah. Vicky, you like this? I have to always make sure that I'm like in the bubble and not like out here. Um, it's a fun little trick that I can do with my program. I can move me around too. see like, boop, there we go. Put it right there. Look, d wearing a different t-shirt today. Just kidding. Um, so repurpose for your blog. Tell me more. Oh yeah, Tony. Yeah. So if you guys didn't know that, um, FYI, all of these videos, see you guys, you guys don't understand how much work I do for you. You know what? I don't even know if you guys know this. Like, I do so much work for you guys. And I know, I know you guys have been telling me, you've been getting on me that I do way too much free. I understand. It's a passion of mine. And I know this, so I'm working on it. But in the meantime, you still get to benefit from all this free value. And um, just think what you get here times that by, I don't know. 10 or 100, that's what the Hey Ed community gets. So if you like what you see here and enjoy the time that we have, you get even more in the Hey Ed community. So I'm just saying that. Um, but when it comes to real quick about what I do here, this show, no matter if we're going live five days a week, three days a week, two days a week, whatever, I take everything from the show and I repurpose it. I, I put it on my blog. I put it on YouTube. I got this all over the place so that you don't have an excuse to not learn something. Like that that's just you can't have that excuse of oh I can't afford this. It's free. Oh I'm not on Facebook. It's on YouTube. Oh I don't pay attention to YouTube. It's on my blog. Like you give me an excuse, I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to give you a solution, okay? That's just how we work around here. So there's that. Um Andy says, definitely need to put my live videos on my blog too, and eventually they will be on YouTube. Yep. And and you guys, I will tell you right now, it's not perfect in terms of, I don't have my SEO with the titles. Some of you are like, SEO what? Search engine optimization. It's it's how things are found on Google and stuff. I don't have all that stuff down. Like, I, I'm just focused on getting the content where it needs to be. Because as you know, if you follow me a lot, I have a ton of content. And I have a lot to say. <laughs> and like my mom has said since I was a kid, I just like to talk, 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 talk. That's all I want to do is talk, talk, talk. Thankfully, it, you guys get to benefit from it now because it's all about business and tech. So it, it, it's worked out well for all of us um, there. So anyway, let me jump into random news. We're just going to show one random news thing and then we will uh, bring on our guests today because I want to make sure we have plenty of time for LinkedIn uh, because it's one of those platforms that I just feel like we don't give enough attention to. So we'll take a look at that in a second, but let me go back to sharing my screen and we're gonna go over to these grocery bags. Have you guys seen these grocery bags? I'm gonna go ahead and play this. We're not gonna have the sound, but how many of you guys would want or need one of these grocery bags? I mean, I didn't know until this video that I needed to really organize 
my groceries. I will say that I don't need this and I'm probably really not in the target market for this. But what's funny is because the reason I say that is because when I go to the grocery store, you guys, I literally, I bring in one bag and I'm like, throw it all in. The checker or the, the bagger will be like, oh, do you want this separated and put the, no, fit it all in the bag. I, I'm not trying to carry around multiple bags. Put it all in there. If it doesn't fit, I'll carry the rest. Like we're good. You know, I need the exercise anyway. I don't need to be going through and having all of these um, these bags. Like no, I I like to have one trip from the car, not multiple trips. You know, I'll be going to Costco and I, I tell them put it all in a box. If I can't get it all in one box, then make it limited because I'm trying to make one trip from the car to the kitchen. That's it. So I don't know. Uh, Tony says, yes, I've seen them. Uh, Andy says, laugh now, be everywhere. Then there are no excuses. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Vicky says, my mom and dad have those. Oh, cool, Vicky. That's awesome. Now I know somebody who has them. Uh, they look super cool. I'm all about organization, you guys. And I think that's really neat. I, it's just not for me because one, I'm not trying to buy all that stuff at one time. But two, I also just want it all in one bag because I'm not picky. The grocery, you know what though? I do get weird looks at the grocery store when I tell them, no, you can just put it all in one bag. They kind of give me that side eye and they're like, one of these guys, huh? What's up with this guy? I, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Although in California, we have to pay for our bags now, which is like 10 cents or something. So maybe they're just like, oh, this, this guy's cheap. He doesn't want to pay 10 cents. No, I could care less about the 10 cent thing. I just don't want everything all over the place. I just want in one thing. <laughs> Uh, Paula says, I think it's pretty useful. Yeah, it looks like it. I do like the invention of it going across on the, um, actual shopping cart. That is cool. And then you can just go through the aisles and you know, like that'd be fun. If any of you guys get this bag, I want to see a Facebook live where you put, okay, okay. This is, I'll stop after this. I want you guys, if somebody gets this, I want you to get or Vicky, you can even do this with your parents. Um, I want you to get your, your phone, put it on the shopping cart, you know, like get a little um, uh, tripod or a little thing to clip it onto the shopping cart. Put it on the shopping cart. So you guys are the shopping cart right here. And then have the bags in the middle. So it's kind of angled a little bit. And then I want you to go through an aisle and go like this. And see what you can get, how many things you can get in the bags. And see which bag, which color has the most items in there and then you win. Huh? Is that fun or what? I don't know. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know. <laughs> That's just how my brain works. Uh, Paula says, we pay for plastic bags in DC and some parts of MD. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. So California is not the only one. Awesome. All right. I know, I know enough fun for now. Gosh, you guys, you guys are boring. You don't want to have me talk anymore like that. Okay, fine, fine. We'll go ahead and bring on our guests. Cause that's what you guys are really here for. I know you guys, you guys aren't here to see me. You guys are here for the guest. So I'm going to be hashtag Ed Talk TV shopping challenge. Oh, Vicky has brought it on. The shopping challenge has started. Who will be the first? Who will be the first? I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's an awesome challenge to see. So that this will be good. You'll have to tag me if anybody does this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bring my guest on. Feel free to share this broadcast out and let your friends know, tag them. Let me go ahead and call our guest, get my screens all set up here, and we are going to switch over. This is my favorite part. Fingers crossed tech works. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Yay, and we have picture. Yeah, yes. <laughs> How Fantastic. are you? I, I'm good. I was watching the show, but I must have been uh, time delayed because I was still watching it, and then your call came up. <laughs> yes, yeah. There's a delay on Facebook, so when, so when you're on here, you want to make sure you're listening to me, mm -hmm. not the Facebook mm -hmm. feed. <laughs> oh. So, so yeah it's great to be here it's actually one o'clock in the morning here so and where are you located <laughs> and and at the moment i'm in hungary in europe so yeah see you guys we are international we get everyone all over the world i love it <laughs> go ahead and introduce yourself to uh, the audience here and let them know who you are and what you do 
Yeah, hi. Uh, so I'm Eleanor Gould and I'm a copywriter by profession, storyteller at heart, so I like to say. Um, and I run a, a copywriting and content creation company. Um, and the reason why I'm come online today with you on your show is because um, I've been on LinkedIn since last August and I've had such, such success that I wanted to share it with, you know, people to show people how I did it. Yes, so, yeah. that, and I appreciate that so much because I will tell you and everyone watching, um, I have LinkedIn and, and I try to keep it updated, but, and I kind of post on there, but it, it's not something that I, it's not like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter for me. It's, it's just, it's there. So that's why I'm so happy that you're here to kind of help all of us. And those who are watching, let me know in the comments, even if you're watching the replay, do you have LinkedIn? Yes or no. And are you active on it? Yes or no. So let us know in there. Um, and then I'll let you go ahead and take us on a, on a spin here. <laughs> okay. So I guess the, it's really interesting actually what you were saying earlier on about repurposing content, because if you are actually stuck, um, about what to actually post on LinkedIn, you can always repurpose content that you've got elsewhere. Um, either as articles or as status updates. Yeah. Um, status updates are like the equivalent to posts on um, Facebook, okay. and they're limited to 13, 1,300 characters, so you have to be succinct. Um, at the moment, um, articles still get lots of traction, but it's in the feed that gets the most traction at the moment, but articles are still important. Okay. So, peop so um, the thing about... LinkedIn is it's all about engagement so if you write a post it's really um, just like you know your shows and Facebook it's all about the engagement it's a, a really powerful engagement tool but when you're first starting out I, I appreciate it can be really hard to know quite where to begin so um, uh, you know I can talk about what should be what shouldn't be but general good practice about um your uh, profile and also your cover photo and yeah. general things, but also about the content. So I don't know what you want me to, yeah. you know, what, what your audience would prefer. Yeah, no, that sounds like a great starting point because I will uh, say that I think across the board, we can all agree that no matter what platform you're on, having your profile picture and or a cover photo is kind of bare basics before you even get into yeah. anything else because you can't really post when you don't have a photo. I mean, you can, but it doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to uh, connect with a gray head. Yes. And you have to be, you know, make yourself look approachable. You know, if you can have a, a professional photo taken, you've got the budget, go for it. But if not, you know, a simple selfie of you looking relatively professional and approachable does the ticket. But um, I would refrain from, you know, pictures of your dog or your cat this is a professional network at the end of the day yep. unless it's something to do with your business unless you're a pet sitter or something like that but even so people want to be able to see you so that they can you know so you look approachable um or, you know if you've just got a picture of your eye or something trendy unless it's on brand it's um it can be quite uh off-putting for people to want to connect with you that's true. And this just came in. Um, Paula was asking, and I'll, I'm not sure if you know the answer for this, but she was asking um, that she has a LinkedIn profile with info for her full-time job, but not one for her current side business. Can she set up multiple pages? Um, you can have a business page, um, but you can only really have one general LinkedIn profile. I think it goes against LinkedIn terms and conditions and whatnot yeah so not really <laughs> right but there are ways she can get around that in okay. her summary and what how she talk and her content and how she talks about what she does so perfect yeah yes and summary is basically um kind of just a, a wrap-up of what you do is that kind of what what they're saying for the summary there well um old linkedin we it used to be a like a resume so you yeah. you know that you have the all the work and jobs and whatnot but now your summary um old old kind of fashion summaries tend to say i do this and i've got all these accolades and qualifications right and you're like yeah i can see that elsewhere but the summary is for really uh telling your story bringing the reader in and showing them what you can do for them so you know it's like the, 
same old sales adage, what you can do for them, not what you'll, you know, not everything great about you. So it's um, a really powerful place, actually, your summary. I like to write a story. In mine, I've got an actual story about Alexander the Great, so I I wouldn't worry about that too much. But, um, you know, for other people, when I say a story, I mean the story of you and the story of your audience and how you connect with them and what you do to, you know, help them. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's really important at that bit because people can go at the rest of your profile to see where you've worked and all your other stuff. So that's a, a really important thing. The other most important thing is your LinkedIn headline oh. that says, uh, so you've got your name and then underneath it, it's got a little bit about you. So in the olden days, it used to be things like CEO or oh, right. whatnot, but that doesn't really tell us what you do. So it's better to have things like, Uh, I'm a digital marketer. I help businesses, you know, transform with digital marketing strategies. That's one of my friends, actually. So it's better to have a, you know, who you are, who you help and how. And also, if you can keyword optimize it, so it's um, your profession. So mine, I'll have copywriter in. So when people are looking, searching on um, uh, LinkedIn for copywriter, they'll find me or they might at one point um, because it's got your keywords in it. So smart. um, yeah, so your LinkedIn summary and your LinkedIn headline, in my opinion, are the most important things and you should you need to work on. Because when you're commenting, uh, people see your headshot and then they'll also see your LinkedIn headline. Oh. So, you, so you'll look up and you'll think, right, who are they? And if they've got something daft and cute, I think, well, I don't actually know what you do. I don't care if you like coffee. Right. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm, I'm on a professional network here, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's going to be on brand, you know. Um, I want to know who you are and what you do and how you can help me. Right. You know? Yeah, no, and that's great. <laughs> that's great advice. Carla said that she's uh, about to work on her profile this weekend, so this is perfect timing. Um, I know that after this, I'm going to definitely be working on mine as well. <laughs> um, and that's really good advice on the headline part because I didn't really pay attention to the headline showing up like that. So that's something where if you guys yeah. have LinkedIn profiles, you want to make sure that you go take a look at really that. really important, yeah. And also when you're commenting, um, only a little bit of it shows up. So the first few characters have to really hit home there to say oh. what, who you are and what you do. Okay, that's but, cool. You know, you can, you can play around with it. Sure. <laughs> And um, with LinkedIn, are you finding that you mostly use it on your desktop or on your mobile or both? Well, I use it on my desktop because I'm a writer and I just sit in front of my desktop all day. I'm not a very mobile, handy person as I go out, (laughs) whenever that is. But um, (laughs) uh, I do use it on both. Uh, They're both... um, I I prefer to use it on... um, Because I'm writing on it every day. But it's great with your mobile as well and especially if you're doing LinkedIn video uh, LinkedIn video is very popular at the moment you can do 10 minutes it's not live but it's a native video upla- uploaded that could be 10 minutes long yeah when they came out well at least I should say when my profile got the update I think we'll say probably three months ago I was kind of like whoop de doo like where have you been you guys like why is it taking so long to get the video part but um Apparently, others had had it prior too, but it was just a feature that they were rolling out. So it's good to hear that that that's popular right now for them. Yeah, for some people, it it, it really really works. Um, I don't use it too much. I use video. I I use IGTV for videos. Yeah. Um, or I use, use Snapchat. I'm not really into LinkedIn video, but it does definitely work for other people. So I'm not saying I'm not poo pooing it or anything like that. It right. definitely works. It's just that it hasn't worked. I haven't seen as much traction when I have posted videos, um, but maybe I don't do it right. So my posts gain more traction. I'm a writer, not a visual person. So Right. Well, and <laughs> so that's interesting because you were talking about how articles get a lot of traction on there. Um, posts, post. not articles. Sorry, posts. Sorry. I mean, yeah, yeah post. And then um, what's interesting, of course, going back to the repurposing, this is how my mind works, you guys. I'm already thinking, have you tried or are you thinking about trying to repurpose your IGTV content since you've already created it as a post on LinkedIn to use the video just to see? 
you can do and that's totally doable i've seen people doing that already yeah so it's definitely uh, uh something that works with articles i i used to uh, well, i still do repurpose a lot of my articles i write on my blog posts onto linkedin articles okay. and for the status updates that are shorter yes i repurpose but i just make it shorter and more uh, you know succinct and get the main points across yeah so content is king on uh linkedin it really is and it's a great way to attract your tribe and your audience because you're showing by what you're posting what you do right so i saw in your video earlier today on uh your morning show oh yeah that you told this you were documenting your journey yeah yeah um and that brilliant for um linkedin and that goes down really well people document in their journey so that your audience can resonate with you and say yeah well, i was there at one point or i'm there now right. <laughs> so yeah i i like that and are you um noticing is it the same in terms of adding friends as if it were you were on facebook is it kind of the same process that people go through or do you kind of have to really know people before you can be kind of linked in with them? It depends on um, your LinkedIn connection strategy. Some people will only connect with you if they can see that you're in their industry or right. of use, you know, they can sell to you or the, you know, the other way around, quite frankly. Um, other people will accept all connections, more or less. I accept more most connections, yeah. um, mainly because I'm a writer and I get lots of uh, content and inspiration from LinkedIn. So it makes sense for me sure. at the moment to accept all connection requests. Um, but when I send connection requests, I always make sure I send a little message and say, hi, I saw something you wrote the other day. I was really interested. You know, I, I make that connection because social media is about being social and making a connection and especially on a professional network so no it's not like uh facebook and it's up to you whether you want to make connections or accept some connections or not people can always follow you um the difference is if they follow you um uh, they see your posts but you don't see theirs um oh and also yeah <laughs> yeah so and therefore your your post technically doesn't get as much reach as if so if they, I think if they comment on it, it doesn't go, you know, all out to their um, connections as well. So it's, um, yeah, it, 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 it works in a kind of, some people say you should have lots of connections. Some people do really well with a few connections. Your connection strategy is down to you, sure. but have one. And but once you've been on the platform a while, you'll, you'll understand. Yeah. And are you um, a part of, well, let me back up before I ask that question. Um, what you mentioned about being able to really connect with people and then send that little personal message is huge, you guys, because, um, and even if you're watching the replay, let me know, but have you noticed even on Facebook now, they've allowed you to, when you request to be a friend, I've seen this, I think on almost all of the friend requests. Um, now they give you a spot to add a personal message if you want to that person. Oh, that's good yes That's good I do. i've not seen that yeah yeah it's uh it's popped up a few times i think it depends on where you're at because for instance um if you're on facebook's website just on desktop and you hit add friend it doesn't show there because it's just a quick add button but if you're actually um on their profile and you hit that it then pops up a little spot underneath that says do you want to add a message or whatever um that's important because that allows you guys to really connect with that person and share something like you said, you know, oh, I saw an article that I liked or it that gives that person another reason if they don't know you like on LinkedIn, you might not have that warm established mm -hmm. relationship yet. That's a way to get there is by giving them that personal note of, hey, I saw something and I appreciated it. Just wanted to connect, you know, looking forward to seeing what else you have to post, things like that. Yeah. I mean, some marketers do it, you know, uh, on on mass, and will send a bulk. They'll they'll go in, find out, or you know, that who they need to connect with, and send it on bulk, and just change change the, change it around a right. bit. But I don't do that. Yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't. It, it's just a tactic. I don't do it. Right. <laughs> it's not my thing. And are but, you um, usually? Sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say, are you part of any uh, LinkedIn groups? Because I know that they have groups on the platform and. You know, I don't hear about them being as popular, but I know that there are a lot of groups there. 
Um, I am, and I run a group actually called the Copywriter because oh, cool. I used to run a big copywriting group on. Well, it wasn't that group; it's for like a few thousand people on Facebook. Um, but I moved over to um, LinkedIn for different reasons. Yeah. Um, but the groups aren't as good as the Facebook groups because um, the algorithm doesn't um, push them up so much. So LinkedIn is still working on that. That's something they absolutely need to Im- improve on. Okay. They, you know, uh, you know, I'd say if you're thinking of setting up a LinkedIn group wait yeah, yeah. <laughs> until they do something with the algorithm on that one <laughs> no but that's good to know because a lot of people might see that and say oh well i have facebook groups linkedin groups let's do it and so that's good for them to know ahead of time that maybe they should just hold back a little bit and kind of just see how groups are running right now but not really dive yeah. into it yet having said that i do know of a couple of groups that are really popular um, and that's because they're just so well managed and they've been popular for years and years. Um, so they've still got, you know, they're a, a great lot of people in engagement there. But trying to start a group up now it is, is difficult, as I've found myself. So that's my personal experience. Other people might have different sure. uh, experiences. And do you find yourself being more or less active on Facebook or kind of the same now that you have the LinkedIn strategy going? Oh, I've just almost abandoned Facebook. Really? Not totally abandoned. Right. I mean, I've got a Facebook page, but I've no longer got groups, so that's that should be telling people something. Yeah. Um, probably more about me, but uh, LinkedIn um, has worked for me. Yeah. That's all I can say because um, my Facebook group um, it wasn't monetized, uh, so uh, you know. I, so it was me giving value all the time, not getting anything back from it, really. Right. Whereas on LinkedIn, I can give that value um, and post uh, my content and I get it back because I get clients that way. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. Well, and I love that you said that for you, like you guys, she's emphasizing for her. So, again, yeah. you have to figure out what works for you and your strategies on which platform. And I love that because, you know, that's that's the thing I tell even my clients and people that I work with here just online. It's letting you know that, yes, you have all of these fantastic programs, LinkedIn, mm-hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of the, the major networks. And yes, you may want to be on all of them, but you don't have to be on all of them. And you may or may not want to put all your efforts into all of them. Like You have to oh, figure great. out which ones work for you. And, yeah. and your audience and then run with that and at the time as well yeah. because you know if if you know a few months down the line and LinkedIn stops working for me I'm not staying around you know what right. I mean <laughs> so you know once Facebook stopped working for me I was okay I and uh, so I don't have a, a massive platform loyalty but since being on LinkedIn that that has changed a lot and I always say the same as you um do what works for you and test, test, test. That's what I always say. This works for me, but do what works for you. Yes. (laughs) Testing is huge. And that goes back to what you were talking about with the headline uh, for LinkedIn and being able to test that and see the the keywords that you want to use, you guys, that relate to your business. And then making sure to have a catchy word more towards the beginning of that headline because that's what really shows up versus having it at the end of that sentence. Yeah. It can it can be quite fun actually. I see lots of people. I change my headline lots, and I see other people in my uh, network changing their headlines. And I was oh, what they call themselves now. You know what I mean? It's it's actually quite fun to see. Yeah. Um, and also the summary, the first few lines, because when you go on someone's profile, you only see the first few lines. So you absolutely have to have a hook, something that gets smart. them to click on the see more. That's smart. And so um, when you're writing your summary, because you're a storyteller. Um, when you're writing a summary, what are some tips that you would give people to kind of think outside the box a little bit to kind of, you know, really paint a picture in their story? Um, well, sometimes, uh, you can start in the middle of the story. So, you know, like when you read a book and at the first page of a book, it's the, the you don't actually buy the book you always look at the first line if it doesn't catch you just put it back don't you yeah um and you could do that's this one tip is start your story in the middle so that they're like oh what's she got to say more that's um or it could be you know make it about your reader just think about what you like to read um just a hook 
uh, you could even have a call to action actually the first few bits even just saying sign up to my free uh lead oh. magnet or book or guide or what have you so that that's another thing and actually there is a space in your summary where you can put all your rich text media so you can put all your um uh calls to action articles blog posts everything i do it's, love that um, feature that feature is mm-hmm. really cool because that's still, I feel like, fairly new, right, for there? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, that I really liked. And and now you've given me an idea because I yesterday morning I came up with something that I'll share more with all of you guys later. But um, I kind of briefly mentioned at the beginning of this episode where I said, you know, um, tech stress is a chronic illness. And so yesterday morning I was sitting in the backyard first thing in the morning and I'm scrolling through Facebook and then all of a sudden it, I was inspired and, and it wasn't anything that I read on Facebook. It just, it just hit me because I guess I just had woken up finally. Um, <laughs> but I started writing this whole thing about tech stress being an illness and I might play with that on LinkedIn and have that be kind of the first place where I'll put it that and maybe the Hey Ed sales page. So it's good to, to kind of brainstorm and now my, my wheels yeah. are spinning. <laughs> You know, and you can change it. It's not set in the stone. Right. Um, so, you know, the thing is to talk to your audience. Don't think that you actually have, like we're having this discussion now. What would you lead with? You know what I mean? So talk to your audience like you're actually having a conversation and bring them into your story, which is in fact their story. Um, there's many ways you can do it. All I would say is, you know, it's key to show, don't tell and don't, make it all about you so i see uh some reason it's all i've got so many years experience this that and the other i'm like oh god so boring yeah yep. <laughs> come on i want to know your personality <laughs> well and i think you that know? yeah and i think the problem with that is that we've all been and this is just off the top of my head but i feel like we've all been trained from our resumes to really like yes. just say what what we're good at and what we've done and we kind of just have to rattle it off and since LinkedIn kind of started as a resume. I think yeah, we've all been absolutely. just trained that way, which is a good example of, you know, how you train your audience. And then, of course, when there's a change, then you have to retrain your audience, which obviously they haven't really done enough of to help more people with that. So that's why we have people like you who can share their expertise and help us get out of that mm-hmm. box and, and really create that story that needs to be told there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, this is what works for me and it's the sort of thing that I see other people having success with because your actual resume, resume can go in the other bits where, it, where it's fourth, where it says your experience. You can put all, you know, your accolades and everything. There's other places for that that people can look and they do. But in your summary bit, I think it's just wise to, you know, give a bit of personality to connect with your audience. Yeah. No, it's true. You know, because pe- the people who you're not right for, they'll just click away. Fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No. And a lot of people do search LinkedIn for um, recruit recruiting people and for finding things like everyone I talk to is always saying the same thing, you know, like, oh, just go on LinkedIn and search for so and so and find this one and connect there and do that. And so it, it is being used a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Um, any other tips that you might have for us, whether it's LinkedIn or around um, your business that you wanted to share with us before I let you go? Because I know it's it's late your time. <laughs> I'm, I'm awake now. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, what I would say is, um, you know, the content, there's all different types of content. So if you get stuck on content, um, there's you can do how to's as content oh, yeah. um, in your uh, status update. You can document your journey like you have you know if you're an entrepreneur this is where I am and this is where I've been that kind of thing you can even um, post questions you know philosophical questions ask people what they think or even in your industry trivia about your industry there's so many things that um, you can post about Um, and I obviously (laughs) I have got of course it's very affordable that goes through all the things you can post about and obviously for your viewers I've got a special discount oh cool but um yeah. So uh, yeah, they can use a coupon called EdTV to get a twenty percent discount. <laughs> I love that. And you guys, don't worry. I will make sure that she posts her links to all of her things. Website. Yeah. You can post your LinkedIn. Whatever you have a link to, and you want to share with us, please feel free in the comments. <laughs> mm-hmm. One thing I would um, really like to say about yeah. LinkedIn is it's a great place for 
um, learning things. So it's not just about connecting, um, but it's it's a great place to learn from others and you know grow your audience. But the best thing I find about LinkedIn is the engagement. And I always say the real gold is in the comments because is if you post something and people comment you can get some real gold from the comments so i oh, like yeah. to call it um comment gold mining so i'll look through the comments and um reply to everybody who's made comments on my post and comment on other people's posts and that's where i make most of my connections and get inspiration for other posts so yes the comments are gold remember that linkedin if you want to be successful at linkedin you absolutely have to engage and I love that you said that because you guys, you know, those who have been following me a long time, I say the magic happens in the comments. And that, ah, there as, you go. as you can see, that <laughs> goes across the board, not just on Facebook land, but all over. Absolutely. And that's, it's now I'm excited about LinkedIn. You guys, I have to say, I'm, I'm actually really excited to jump through LinkedIn. And you know, like I post, like I said, but I don't, I don't give it the attention that I give Facebook. And so I'm kind of now thinking, okay, I, I need to start paying a little bit more attention to LinkedIn just to, to give it a little bit more love, just to see where we can go with it. Yeah, I mean, like you say, um, I think it's sometimes people try to be everywhere and, and you just can't, I think, you know, have one or two platforms and now them. Yes. But if you want to go on LinkedIn, you know, it, it is uh, worthwhile to tip, tip toes and see, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's great. And um, what about the, um, so we covered, uh, I just want to make sure a quick recap for those who joined. We covered a cover photo, having mm -hmm. a nice profile image there and making it professional. Even if you can't get professional headshots, you guys, you can at least do a professional selfie. Listen, you guys, mm -hmm. the photo that you see here on my Facebook business page, my profile photo, I took that myself using my phone and my lights, but even if you don't have lights, you can still do outdoor lighting, that's fine. But I literally love that photo, and that's my profile photo for a lot of things and my um, bio photo, because I can say that I took the photo and it ties into like my personality and just, just mm -hmm. you know, the fact that you don't need to have all the fancy things to get to where you need to be at this moment. You can always yeah, upgrade absolutely later, not. right? So mm -hmm. it's one of those things to have a professional photo of yourself, whether you take it or somebody else takes it. Um, make sure to have your headline, uh, have it catchy and have some keywords in there for your industry. And then also make sure that you write up your summary and, and play with it. Have some personality in there and make it like a story. And like we were saying, you could you could start in the middle of your story. You can start with your freebie uh, at the beginning, like just play with it. And remember, it's not set in stone. That was an, a big point that you brought up that it doesn't have to be set in stone. You can constantly change it and just kind of play with that. Absolutely. And it was interesting that you're talking about your cover photo because mine, if you see, it's got that blue ring around it. I did that on Canva and oh, yeah. it shows up It shows up more on uh, LinkedIn. So lots of people use that little circle trick now as well. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a cool thing too, you guys. You can play on Canva, which is free. You can play on Canva and test out different um, shapes. You can also test out different coloring, you know, because I know Canva has the, the rings that you can change the color. I mean, I don't mm. know, you know, you can test all those different things. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, I mean, I just use my brand colors, but other people yes. use different stuff. Yeah, remember to stick with brand colors, guys. That's an important one. <laughs> uh, Vicky says, I just updated my headline and banner. Nice work, Vicky. I'm going to go have a look at it then. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm already like, she's already doing the work over here. <laughs> uh, Is that Vicky Smith? Yes, Vicky that, Smith. She got me on this show, so now I'm going to go and look at her profile. Well. <laughs> oh, I love it. See, you guys, it's contagious. You you start here and then you start bringing your friends and, and it's all one big party. Uh, Susan says that she did one in her hallway before she got a pro to shoot hers, meaning her profile picture. See, you can do it right there. That's awesome. Mine is in my hallway. Yeah. In my picture. If you look, it's got that blue. That's my hallway. Oh, see? <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> Vicky says, LOL, it's probably rubbish. Vicky, you did the work. It's more than you had before. So it's good. It's good enough for now. Exactly. 
I love that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for staying up late for us because I know you're in a way different time zone and uh, <laughs> and for sharing all of those tips about LinkedIn. Be sure to um, share all your links in the comments so people can find you okay. and connect with you. Um, and if you have anything else you want to let us know, feel free here and then I'll let you go. No, it's uh, been really good. I'm sorry if I cut in. I know there's a there's a time lag with this Skype, so if I cut in on you, I I do apologize. Oh no, it's all good. <laughs> Anytime, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, no. So thank you so much um, for uh, allowing me on your show. And I think I'd say, you know, if there's one person who if you're stuck for content, just come and look at your show because you are serving your audience really oh, well. You. you know, everything you do is actually what you can do on LinkedIn as well. So, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. It's a lot of fun. So, you know, as long as it's fun, we all in can enjoy, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Have a great you're rest welcome. of your evening and um, we'll talk soon. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Awesome, guys. So this is how it works. This is what happens when, when you join us live and you become a guest. You just you get to share your knowledge and your expertise with me and the audience, and even if you're watching the replay. So it's super cool. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am so ready to go look at my LinkedIn profile and see what updates I can make to it with the ideas that are floating in my head already. Uh, and uh, keep an eye out for the comments uh, for... Uh, Eleanor to be able to put in her links. She'll drop them in later. Go check out. I'm even curious now too about her storytelling business. I'm like, yes, I want to see what that's all about. So uh, if you need anything, you know where to find it, checkwithed.com. That's where you'll go right now to sign up for the newsletter if you're not on that list yet because it's going to go out tomorrow morning and I want you to get that list or that email. So go sign up and get on the newsletter and then do yourself a favor and save a few minutes to go look at Hey Ed. I'm telling you right now, because here's the thing, I don't want you to come back and say in a week, a, two weeks, a month, two years later, Ed, I didn't know you had this. How come I didn't know about this? I, You could have saved me a ton of money and a ton of time. I know. That's why I'm telling you now. Go look at it, okay? Go check it out. So I will leave you with this, and I will see you back here same time, same place tomorrow. And until then, have a great rest of your evening. Take care. What is the Hey Ed community? I'll let them tell you. I'm drawn to this community, Erica, because listen, I'm going to make sure as a business person, I know you are as well, serious business women, we are. We're gonna make sure that we're getting the content knowledge we need from the Hey Ed community. But I also wanna laugh, I wanna have fun, I wanna enjoy my work day. And I know I'll get that balance in the hand community. I know he'll, yeah, he'll tolerate our tangents. And I think that's the perfect, the perfect way to have a really good engaged community. It's a perfect balance of business and fun.